Now, hundreds of thousands of benefits claimants with mobility and mental health problems will be ordered to seek work in a bid to plug job vacancies and slash the £26 billion welfare bill. Work and Pensions Secretary Mel Stride says the shift towards working from home should allow those who struggle to leave the house or suffer, so suffer social anxiety to hold down jobs that would have been impossible a decade ago. 2.4 million people claim incapacity benefits, with ministers alarmed by a steep rise in handouts since the pandemic. Under the new rules, those deemed capable of work could have their, be their benefits docked if they refuse to cooperate. In a fierce backlash, disability charities have branded the proposal cynical, but the government insists the reforms are designed to help people fulfil their potential. Now, I think there's a couple of issues with this. Well, I think it's great that working from home can allow people who have social anxiety and people who have disability issues to continue to be part of the workforce or get back into the workforce and work from home. I think that's a great thing. But what I wouldn't want to see is people who genuinely can't work, genuinely need to be on those benefits, forced back to work, and then they end up signed off again and it's back to square one so if this is a genuine way to try and get some people back into the workforce and people who can great but otherwise i can understand why some people are saying it can come across as cynical and i think it does come across a bit cynical as well if it's going to be beneficial for these people great but i don't know that it will be beneficial for everyone i've got more problems with this though in the sense that if you read the release that came out today this is a consultation and it probably won't come into force until 2025. Yeah. So what we're really dealing with is a government that's making a headline saying, we don't want to spend so much on benefits, and then doing nothing about the benefits. And actually, I think that they really could have tilted this towards technology and training mm. to say, look, we, we've got to reduce the benefits bill. These are the numbers. These are the, this is what's happened post-pandemic. And I think in terms of how they've spun it, I think it's spun in a way that allows them to be seen as, you know, tough on benefits claimants and, and you know, the nasty party and all this stuff. Mm. Instead of saying, what the pandemic taught us was, first of all, there are long-term effects, which really could adversely affect people. Mm -hmm. And also that technology has changed, which means there are jobs with the right training we could support to get a certain number of people, and this is our target, and this is how we're going to do it. And I think if you see it as like stick and carrot, then that's old school, 80s politics, tear bit, get in your bike and all that stuff, as opposed What's to... What's wrong with that? Because it's old-fashioned, it doesn't work. And, and what, oh, what... Really? <laughs> yeah, really. And, and what we now Thank have you. to do Thank is we have minister. to... Look, I don't, want to see, <laughs> I don't want to see people claiming benefits who either don't need them or shouldn't get them. And we know that there are people gaming the system. But I also think that this is toothless, I think it's delayed, and I think it's, it's, it's headline-grabbing, and it's not even grabbing the headlines. The working-from-home angle also is spin on the part of the government. What they're really saying... They, so you've got 2.5 million people are on long-term sickness benefits Mm. for incapacity to work. <coughs> what the government is essentially saying is we suspect a million of them uh, could go to work. And it's not just about working from home. Uh, they are uh, casting aspersions, if you like, about the number of people who say, I can't go to work because I suffer from anxiety. Mm. They're saying, yeah. if you suffer from anxiety, that's no reason not to go to work. Yeah. Uh, also, a lot of people, it's about not being able to get to the office. They say that kind mm. of issue can be overcome. You can get people to the office or the factory or wherever. So this is actually uh, a charter to try to end what they believe uh, is sort of lazy Britain, sick note Britain, that we've got a million people, they estimate, uh, may well be swinging the leg, leg the lead. So uh, this is what this is about. And uh, it, it, I, th I do think we've got to tell people, you know, ang uh, suffering from anxiety, I know that anxiety can be overwhelming. That's, and there's nothing against the 1.5 so million people. So why have they people. delayed it then? Uh, well, that, exactly. Well, exactly. They're, say they're saying that they're delaying it because they have to retrain the assessors who assess people's benefits oh. and that that's going to take a couple of years. And they're also saying that there's this loophole which you were referencing, which is actually, um, officially, it's if they think that somebody is at risk of suicide. So if somebody's mental health is so bad, mm. and they're saying that since that was introduced, that has become a loophole that a lot of people have been using. Yeah, they think about 350,000 people are using that loophole and they don't think that, that's that, that there are that many people who are suicide risks. I, 
I think, and this is just a fact of, of British politics, that when and if the Labour Party come out with their own policies, which John Ashworth, who's just been moved out of this position... In, demoted. In, demoted. He was actually doing some proper thinking on this, some really quite controversial thinking that was going down like a bucket of sick with a lot of Labour supporters, but was really quite interesting and innovative, and actually, I think, going to be in some ways stronger than what the Tory party's coming up with. But because this is the Conservative Party coming up with it, they will be accused of being heartless. Well, when good. the Labour Party, I think, is actually going to come up with something more heartless. In Glasgow, Liverpool and Manchester, one in five working-age people are uh, not working. They're on incapacity. In uh, Manchester, there are lots of vacancies in all of these cities. In Manchester, there are 22,000 vacancies of jobs on an average salary of 39,000 pounds a year and yet one in five people are not working this really is about laziness it's about sick note britain people are skiving this is an, an initiative to try to end that but i totally agree with you james what is the point of saying yeah we're going to get tough on it oh by the way it won't be till 2025 it's ridiculous mm -hmm. But there's another, there is another fly in the ointment, mm -hmm. and that is, of course, that there are people who are claiming benefits, but they're also doing cash and hand jobs. And there is no or little way of monitoring that, and that's part of the reason why some people don't want to work, because but, they're better off. But it's also true that one in five people on um, incapacity benefit want to work. That, that, that one in five... That, and that's a significant so number of people one, who want a job, and, you know, if we can find a way using this technology... One in five to get, don't want yeah, to work, to, then. Four in five uh, say they're too sick. One yes. in five say if there was a way they could find a job and they could cope with whatever it is... Since the pandemic, we've become a nation of skivers, trust me. Yeah. The furlough, furlough scheme wrecked the work ethic in this country. That's the problem.